sweet home Alabama, where there is something special cooking here on the plains. Auburn is undefeated. Walking like Tigers, they know this season can be special. An SEC title is a possibility. A national championship is the dream. Enter a spirited young group from Arkansas, seeking a big winning road. Today is the Arkansas Razorbacks against number two ranked Auburn. The Home Depot SEC on CBS. The time is now for number two ranked Auburn as they take the field arm in arm with head coach Tommy Tuberville. And the time is now for Arkansas, fresh off the overtime win against Alabama. In the tough SEC West, only Auburn and Arkansas are unbeaten in conference play. That will change by day's end. A big hello, everyone. Craig Bullerjack along with Steve Burline. So glad to have you alongside. Auburn's defense so highly respected around this country. They will be challenged today by the top ground attack, Steve, in the SEC. Well, you're exactly right, Craig. This Auburn defense has been absolutely awesome this year. They are very fast, they're very physical, and they're very focused on shutting down that vaunted Arkansas rushing attack you spoke about because they know that would put the pressure directly on the shoulders of Mitch Mustaine, the true freshman quarterback, making only his fourth career start, and more importantly, his first start on the road in one of the most hostile environments in all of college football. It's a wild scene in Auburn. Upset-minded Arkansas, number two ranked Auburn, and the kick straight ahead on CBS. Welcome back, Jordan Air Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. This is the 16th meeting between Arkansas and Auburn. The Tigers have won three in a row. And Steve, there was a snap of fall in the air today, 67 degrees. In Auburn, Alabama, the forecast clear and sunny skies. There's Houston Nutt, the head coach of Arkansas in his ninth season. They've won three in a row. His counterpart today, Tommy Tuberville, in his eighth season on the plane, 65 and 27 career with the Auburn Tigers. Arkansas won the toss. They chose to defer, and Auburn will receive at the goal line. Tristan Davis has some room at the 20, high steps outside of the 30, and is pushed down at the 35 yard line. Let's take a look at our Applebee's starting lineups. And the quarterback today, Brandon Cox. Last week against South Carolina, 13 of 19 for a 180 yards and threw a touchdown. Up front, Dunlap, the king. King Dunlap with Grubbs. Bosley will start at center. Duckworth and Palmer on the right side. Backs and receivers. There's many weapons, including Courtney Taylor, but Kenny Irons is the heart and soul of this Auburn offense. From the 35-yard line, the pitch, Irons, patient, to the 40, 45 to the 46. What a start, 11-yard pickup, knocked down by Keith Jackson. As we look at Arkansas defensively, it's Anderson and Mitchell, Jackson who just had the tackle, and Antoine Robinson. Good core of linebackers, led by Ola Jabutu, Dacus and Hewitt, and the secondary, Houston Kelly, Grant, and Richardson. From the eye formation, the pass, quick hitter to the near side, near a first down marker at the 42-yard line. And let's go above the line, Steve Berline. Well, with, when Auburn has the football, the key for them is to have some play action, I think, because Arkansas is going to be keen on that run game and then big plays. Now, Arkansas defensively, they've got to have momentum shift. They have had no they only have one turnover on the season. They've got to make plays that can change the momentum quiet this crowd down, kind of take some control and get some confidence up in this very hostile environment for them. Boy, a couple of plays from scrimmage, back-to-back -back first down. Big chunks of yardage being uh, rung up right now by Auburn. But not this time. Anderson, the left end, breaks through with the big loss. 
back to the 46-yard line. And Craig, you know what this was? Watch Brandon Cox, the quarterback. After he makes the pitch, he's going to peel back over here to the left-hand side, and you're going to see he was the one that was actually going to get this pass. It was going to be a throwback across the field, but there was too much penetration. Never had a chance to get set and make the throwback across the field. A little bit of gadgetry, a little gimmickry already out of Tommy Tuberville. Well, it cost him 11. Second down and 21. Back at the 46-yard line. There's a little boost. The lefty throws with a flat incomplete. And that play action, bootleg action that you saw right there by Brandon Cox is so key off the running game for the Cumberland Tigers. But a great job by the Arkansas defense being disciplined. Chris Houston, number two, was right there. Didn't bite on the fake. Did a super job of holding his ground and covering Tommy Trott trying to come out there in the flat. Gave Brandon Cox nowhere to throw that football. Third down at 21. Lee Guess lines up on a slot from the shotgun. Cox, good protection, slings it at the 50-yard line. It's caught by Rodriguez Smith, his second grab of the Rodriguez. afternoon. And he's knocked down at the 45-yard line, well short of the first down. Arterial uh, Richardson in on the stop. And you know, Craig, Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, he's got to be happy right now because he was afraid that Auburn would come out and try and pound the ball. They ran for a lot of yards last year in their matchup, but he was hoping they'd come out trying to throw the ball like they did. Brandon Cox threw three or four passes on that first drive. Arkansas is afraid of the running game and Kenny Irons. They, they want Brandon Cox to try and take over this game. Cody Bliss, the punter, toes it to the 15-yard line. Cedric Washington, maybe to the 23. So a 30-yard punt, an eight-yard return, and we'll see Arkansas when we come back on CBS. Arkansas ready to go on the offensive end as we look to the Applebee's starting lineups for Arkansas. So much talk about this young man, Mitch Mustaine, the freshman, the true freshman from Springdale, Arkansas. 487 yards on the season up front to protect him. On the left side, Tony Hugo, a three-year letterman, a senior from Houston, Texas. And the backs and receivers, he has weapons as well, but it's Darren McFadden, who's number two in the SEC and rushing over 102 yards a ball game. The offensive coordinator fresh out of high school, Gus Malzahn from Springdale High School. And if that name sounds familiar for those folks down in Razorback country, he led Mitch Mustaine to the high school championship in Springdale a year ago. Yeah, I was going to make sure you, Gus Malzahn didn't look like he just graduated from high school last year. <laughs> no. he, he was the head coach for Mitch Mustaine and, and a few other players, key players on this Arkansas offense. First play. They try to power the ball to McFadden, maybe two yards. To the 31 yard line. Defensively for the Auburn Tigers. They are tough up front. Gunn Thompson with Marks and Groves. The linebackers, Will Herring moves up from a safety to an outside linebacker. Didi very good on the outside as well. And keep your eye on the left corner, David Irons, who is the brother of Kenny Irons. On the offensive side, second down and seven after the pickup of three. Mustaine throws. They set up the screen, far side, down the sideline, goes to speedster Felix Jones. Jones, who runs a 4-4, sprinted for big yards. And let's go back above the line. Well, Arkansas having the ball. They had three turnovers last week against Alabama. They've got to protect the pigskin against Auburn. They've got to be able to run the football well, take care of the football, don't get this crowd fired up. Auburn has to rattle Mitch Mustaine's cage. That means hits on the quarterback sack, but also doing a lot of confusing things defensively to get it to where he does not feel comfortable back there in the pocket. But well, what they were able to do, Malzahn gave him a little screen pass. It's an early confidence booster. First down, Hogs. Here comes McFadden, turns the corner. How about that pursuit by Auburn? Well, what a great hit by number two, Aaron Savage, right there, coming up, supporting from the safety position. You said it just right there, though, Craig. We, we knew that Arkansas was going to come out. Tommy Tuberville, Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, they expect Arkansas to run the ball and then get Mitch Mustaine's confidence up with short passes, screen passes, 
anything to get him feeling like things are going positively for him early in this ball game. He's 3 and 0 as a starter at Arkansas. Second down, nine. Hot slant, caught, big yards, and a first down. Peyton Hillis sometimes goes unnoticed in this Arkansas offense with McFadden and Jones. That's a big first down. You're going to see a great quick drop by Mitch Mustaine right here. And what is really unique about number 22, Peyton Hillis right here, he's a fullback. But he's lined up outside running a slant route. He's so versatile. And Gus Malvon and the Arkansas offense, they're going to try and find creative ways to get him the football because he makes good things happen. A pick up of 14 and a first down. Little misdirection, and again, they stay home in the gaps as they knock down McFadden. We'll have to wait and find out. Outside they go. Jones, he may go. Pop at the 20 yard line. Well, McFadden is the, is the plow. Jones is the uh, thoroughbred horse and has the 4 4 speed. And here's what you're going to see a lot of all day. Gus Malvon was telling us that he wanted to find ways to get the ball to Felix Jones, number 25. He is the speed man. He's got great ability. He makes people miss out in the open field. They're going to find ways to get the football to number 25. And they've got that three headed monster, Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, Peyton Hillis. Very unique, each one of them in their strengths. And they've used them well in this opening drive. Confidence gaining for Mustaine. McFadden having trouble getting outside. Knocked down by Quentin Groves. That guy right there, he is a beast, Darren McFadden. This man has got power, he's got speed, and he finishes off. I mean, when you watch the film, you see him finishing off runs, I think as good as any running back in, in college football. He's always going forward, he's always delivering the blow, and that's a guy that is very well respected around the SEC and around the country. And Steve last year set an Arkansas freshman rushing record, 1113 yards, 11 touchdowns. And now Mustaine will call timeout. He wants to talk, and the youngster goes to the sideline. Hogs are pushing on CBS. The Burline, Arkansas in the red zone, and that is an oddity. Can I say that this year for Auburn's defense? They are third in the NCAA in scoring defense, allowing 8.2 points a game. Even more impressive, they have not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. Only two schools in Division I and that's Michigan and Auburn. And Arkansas knocking on the door. Eighth play of this drive. Mustaine, the handoff. And a host of Tigers in on the stop of McFadden. And you're going to see a different Auburn defense down here inside the red zone. You talked about they're only giving up, they only get up three touchdowns in the red zone out of nine attempts this year. 33%. Will Muschamp has a lot of confidence in his red zone defense. And you said it, Craig, this team has not given up a rushing touchdown this year. And what's more impressive, their opponents up to this point have 34 touchdowns rushing the ball in the season, zero against Auburn. First third down in this opening drive. Mustaine throws it to the flat. And the catch is made well short of the first down at the 17. Jones able to find a handle. I'll tell you what, Felix Jones had a lot of, watch right here, you're going to see Felix Jones peeling out to the left side of your screen from the backfield back there by Mitch Mustaine. He's going to catch the pass, or if, he, if he does catch the pass in stride, look at all the room he's got out in front of him down the sideline. He might score on that play. This will be a 34-yard attempt by Jeremy Davis, his longest of the season, 24, and the kick is away and through the uprights. So Arkansas on the road put three on the board against Auburn. Well, we knew according to Reggie Herring, who we talked to, the defensive coordinator, he may go a 3-4 look today or a 4-3 because they've been beat up on the defensive side of the football. And right now it's working. In the pocket to the sideline, tough catch, incomplete. 
Courtney Taylor nearly had it. And Chris Houston was laying on his back. And that's a situation that Arkansas lives for. They love getting their opponents in third and long situations. They do a lot of exotic things in that third down package. And right there, Brandon Cox did a super job of finding the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, delivered a good ball to Courtney Taylor that would have picked up the first down. Courtney Taylor's big enough name, a good, good enough receiver here to make that catch and get the big first down for Auburn. There's Cody Bliss averaging nearly 50 yards a kick. What a weapon. It gets off another beauty. High, high spiral. And it's taken at the 36-yard line by Cedric Washington. A 44-yard kick and no return. 126 in second of the game with a score. That is a new school record now after the three-pointer by Jeremy Davis last time uh, they had the football. 34-yard boot. This crowd's getting a little antsy. Mustaine, the true freshman, all day to throw over the middle, complete to the 45-yard line. Go, Washington, go, the senior from Bryant, Texas, on the receiving end, his second grab of the season. What a great job of protecting Mitch Mustaine back there in the pocket. The old line: Hugo, Parker, Luigs, and Felton and Tubbs. Nobody anywhere near Mitch Mustaine, and he had plenty of time to survey the whole field. Did a good job throwing the strike. Got that ball in there on the money. Big time throw. Second down and short. Boy, the pads are popping. And McFadden pushes his way. What and looks to be a first down. Well, D gets an A here in Auburn. Yeah, you, you, I mean, look at the numbers in that column right there. The rushing numbers. You got 88.2 yards a game they're, they're, they're giving up. Third in the SEC, they're doing a super job. Sacks, their their total defense, 258 yards a game. They are just being very stingy. Yards are hard to come by, and Will Muschamp, the defensive coordinator, deserves a lot of credit now. Now both Purdue and Iowa four and one, and as Tim mentioned, both coming off tough losses a week ago. And Drew Tate, the quarterback, right there, good for his confidence. He had a really poor performance. Very rare, yeah, for him to have a bad one. Get that confidence back up today. Mustaine has confidence. Up and over. Nearly intercepted. Threw it in double coverage. He wanted Wes Murphy as tight end. Mustaine's pass intended. Who did a little straight block and was trying to find his way between the seam. Yeah, good job by Jonathan Wilhite right there. This Auburn defense, you're not going to fool him very much. That's why Will Muschamp told us the key he thought was to survive the first 15 scripted plays that Arkansas that most offenses have because you don't really know what's coming in that first 15 plays. But once you get through it, you can start settling down and playing normal defense. And they're so disciplined, they're not going to get fooled too often. Arkansas well rested. Remember, coming off the bye after the emotional win over Alabama. Hey, Auburn still beat up after that LSU game. Quick pass, sideline, caught it. Oh, baby, see you later. Touchdown, Marcus Muff. I'll tell you what. That right there is a gift from heaven for the Arkansas Razorbacks. That ball should have been intercepted. Should have been intercepted. You had Jonathan Wilhite in perfect position. Look at this. Right there. He's right there. A little bit of, little bit of physical contact going on there. And Marcus Monk, six foot five, big receiver. But look at the throw by Mustang. He throws it off his back foot. He's not even looking. Just kind of floats it out there. Really a dangerous throw. Good pressure by Aaron Savage, the safety coming up the gut. Auburn got exactly what they wanted, but Wilhite fell down and gives up a touchdown. Oh, my. Stunned. A stunned crowd in Auburn, Alabama. 50-yard hookup. Mustang to Monk. We'll be back on CBS. 10-0 Arkansas over number two ranked Auburn. Five plays, 64 yards. It was the 50-yard reception by the 6'6 Marcus Monk from that young man, the freshman, right out of high school a year ago, Mitch Mustaine. And I'll tell you what, you can sense the uh, the shock in this crowd in this stadium right now. And I'll tell you what, this Auburn Tiger team better wake up quickly or they're going to see it all slipping out of their grasp right now. It's the largest deficit the Auburn Tigers have faced this year. Short kick. Lester at the two. Lester at the 20. And a flag is down on the far side.
match right here. Aaron Savage is going to shoot the gap. This is the top part of the, the field right there. You're going to see the matchup. But Aaron Savage comes through. Auburn had the perfect defense called. They had exactly what they wanted. It should have been an interception. It ends up being a seven-point swing. Arkansas getting the big touchdown and control of this football game very early. Third touchdown catch for Marcus Monk this season. Auburn down by 10 and the field position. Not good. There's a fumble on the snap and Cox able to fall on it back at the eight yard line. Boy, a couple of wheels beginning to wobble. Yeah, you know, we've mentioned Auburn has not been in this position this year and I'll tell you somebody on this team whether it's a coach or a player is going to have to wake up everybody because it's not one person you're sensing across the board these guys are are kind of dead out there they're kind of just sitting in cement you know and, and, and not really 100 percent focused as they should be right now that's the uh, the number 50 is Joe Cope who's out with a knee injury he is the center Jason Bosley a sophomore is in today and maybe some problems on the exchange, but that time Taylor comes across the seam and picks up nice yardage to the 19-yard line. Well, the good thing about it for Auburn is they are at home, and they know they've been in enough situations over the past couple years, or past several years with Tommy Tuberville, that they know one good drive gets their confidence back up, gets them right back in this ball game where they want to be, and it puts the pressure back on Arkansas to keep control of that ball game. Third down and short. Need about a yard, yard and a half from the eye as Cox under center. They give the ball. Oh, big hole, and it's open for Lester as he popped through off the right side. First down, Auburn. And let's go back to New York for an update on Clemson and Wake. Tip. All right, Craig, uh, the Tigers have lost the last two in Winston-Salem. Watch the freeze on this uh, in route as Riley Skinner hits Willie Adelette for a seven-yard strike. It's 7-3 to three as they open the second. Wake hasn't been 6-0, and oh, fellas, since 1944 when P. Head Walker was the coach. 43.4 points a game. That's second, by the way, in the NCAA. Big run. Here comes Lester to the sideline. Bucked out of bounds at the 42. Now that's the play you just spoke of. Who was going to stand up and slow this Arkansas defense? Lester just did it. And this is just a straight ahead running play off the left side. Boom, just powering off the ball. Watch Lester though. He's not known as a power back, but he gets up in the hole. There's a nice job by the O-line up front. But look at running through tackles, using his, using his strength. And again, he's not known for that, but he showed right there he can do it if he's given the opportunity and he has to. Shaking it up a little bit for Auburn. Put in that little second running back, changing up the pace for this Arkansas defense. You know, they might get a little bit confident when Kenny Irons on the sideline, but you can't do it. Brad Lester, a very good tailback. A pickup of 19 yards, three-step drop, man coverage out of bounds. And the catch is made by Rodriguez Smith, but there's a flag back at the 41. Yeah, it's going to be offsides on Arkansas. Brandon Cox did a super job of realizing he had the easy free gift play with an offsides by Arkansas. That's when a quarterback, an experienced quarterback, is going to take a shot at the field because he knows he's got nothing to lose. Offsides on the defense. Touchdown is line. First down. So as soon as Brandon Cox saw that Arkansas jumped offside, he said, hey, I'm taking a shot at the field. Maybe we'll get a big one. Good decision. First and 10 on the 37-yard line. Brandon Cox. He has been beat up of late. He had a knee and high ankle sprain against LSU, a game you and I did, Steve, and many in the stadium thought he may be done for the season. But he wears the brace, and there's second and third effort. That is a tough four yards for Carl Stewart. And now a late flag is tossed. The flag on the play. And yeah, we're going to have either offsetting or maybe a penalty on uh, Matero Richardson. He slapped. Rod Smith in the helmet after the play there. And these referees don't want a game like this to get out of hand with little outbursts like that. Nothing major, but teams have to be after disciplined. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike, number nine on the defense, also unsportsmanlike, number 80 on the offense. By rule, they offset, second down. Well, we talked about how tough Brandon Cox 
played against LSU. He was beaten battered, my friend. He was. And Tommy Tuberville said this team is still recovering from that game. But right there, that was the play. You can see the pain Brandon Cox was in. But tough enough to come back, take it in on a quarterback sneak a few plays later. Really gutsy performance. But, man, a lot of people thought he might have broken his leg on that play against LSU. Second down, another rollout. The lefty throws. Little pitch and catch. McKenzie. They tied in at the 21-yard line. Gabe McKenzie, a redshirt freshman from Mobile, Alabama. And you can see what happens when you get a few good runs all of a sudden. It forces the Arkansas defense to play the run a little bit more honestly, even though the backside there, Chris Wade, number 94, played it well. Brandon Cox had enough time to get Gabe McKenzie dragging across the field. A little misdirection, easy throw and catch for the Auburn Tigers. Under a minute to go in the opening quarter. That's belonged to Arkansas thus far. The handoff, Lester, a little stop and go. And that hesitation caused him to lose maybe a yard back to the 22-yard line. Olojabutu with the tackle. He had 13 stops, all by his lonesome against Alabama two weeks ago. That guy right there may be one of the most impressive football players in, in, in the whole country. Sam Olajabutu, five foot nine. Reggie Herring, his coach, calls him a midget, but he also follows it up by saying he could start for any team in the country. Cox throws, complete. Good read by Arkansas defensively as they wrap up Taylor. Robinson was there and the strong side backer, Matt Hewitt. And what we're seeing right now is, is the Auburn offense really opening things up a little bit, mixing it up with the run in the pass, kind of what Brandon Cox was hoping for. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Arkansas on the road, up by 10 over number two ranked Auburn. So Welcome back. Jordan Air Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. And Steve Berline, Arkansas has done more than survive the first quarter here. They're in control of this ball game. They're, 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 uh, Auburn, Auburn's trying to survive the first half right now. They're, they're running around like uh, they have no idea what's going on. But this drive, they started their own 10. Several first downs, four first downs, facing a tough third and 13 right here. Big play. Brandon Cox. Audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. Steps up in the pocket. Throws over the middle. Touchdown! Rodriguez Smith, a beautiful catch for six. Well, I guess one lucky play deserves another. Watch the backside safety on this play. Randy Kelly, number six, when you get a chance to see it, you're going to see that he should have made this play. It was a, a ball that Brandon Cox, he checked to. I think he was actually fooled because they fell back into zone coverage, and he just floated that ball down the middle. Randy Kelly should have made a play on that ball. Rod Smith gets it for a touchdown instead. Now we have a new ball game. First play of the second quarter is John Vaughn is up and good, 18 of 18 on PAT. A 24-yard strike from Cox to Smith. Auburn's feeling a little bit better about themselves after that 24-yard touchdown by Rodriguez Smith. They go 90 yards, less than four minutes off the clock. They did, and that was huge for Auburn. They had, it was third and 13. They were looking at maybe a for sure field goal, but I was concerned because in that situation, you, you do not want to throw an interception. That ball very easily could have been intercepted. It ends up being seven points for Auburn. And the kick is away. And there's a flag drop. Boy, just inside the one yard line. Well, they're saying the ball went out of bounds before it got into the end zone. They're going to have to re-kick it. Or possibly they, they'll spot the ball at the 40-yard line. Look at this play, though. The replay of the last touchdown. Let's look at how close. The, the ball went out of bounds right across from the goal line plane. Therefore, it's foul. Ball will be first down. I'll tell you what, that was, I don't know how that referee makes that decision. That was pretty darn close. So Tommy Tuberville, a few uh, a few calls going against him in this game on their home field, down by three for Auburn. 
So Arkansas takes over first and 10 at the 33 yard line. They try the right side behind Felton and Tubbs and Darren McFadden. They'll give him maybe three. And I'll tell you, this Ar Arkansas offense should be very fresh right now. They've had a long time to sit on the sidelines, wait for their next opportunity. McFadden looked pretty excited on that play to have the football in his arms. I, I think he's ready to roll a few times here. McFadden, the number two rusher in the SEC behind Kenny Irons. Boy, he hits that hole. Upfield it goes. Watch out. McFadden at the 25, 15, 5, touchdown. I just had a feeling <laughs> they were going to feed the big man. And what a great, great job of blocking up front, popping that ball through there. This guy's big and strong, but he's got some wheels and can finish it off. You saw right there. There was nobody closing the gap on him. Power and speed. He runs a 40 and 4-3, and he rumbles 63 yards for the touchdown. Extra point to come. He had a 72-yarder against Utah State in the opening game. And the kick is up and good. 17-7. 63 yards goes Darren McFadden. Well, it's been a big day of big plays for Arkansas. This one goes 63 yards. McFadden on the run. And you're going to see a great job up front by the offensive line. Felton right here coming down. Louis sealing it off. And you're going to see Parker right here pulling around the edge and sealing it off. And a super job of the timing of the play. No one even touches Darren McFadden. And you get that big man with those shoulders square coming up the field. We talk about it, his strength and how physical he is. But he's got the speed to make you pay in a hurry. A super job by the whole offensive line. And the whole offense, really, I had a feeling they looked fresh coming out on that first run, and man, they made me look like I knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yes, they did. <laughs> Fourth rushing touchdown of the season for McFadden. And the first of the year given up by the Auburn defense. Going to bring it out. It's Lester up the middle. Lester. Stiff arm and push that about. <laughs> uh, Michael Grant does a super job here coming up and, and keeping this from being a touchdown. But, well, I didn't think Lester should be taking that ball out of the end zone. Little indecisive, but he made the right call. He hits the hole hard. He's quick. Great move on the kicker right there to the outside. And Michael Grant, fortunately, pursuing from the backside, did a good job running him out. But what a great response by the Auburn Tigers to get some excitement back in this crowd. Lester was three yards deep, ran it back 71 yards. Now here comes Irons. Cuts back across the grain, four yards. As the Hawks swarm him under at the 20, call it the 28-yard line. Yeah, I really think Auburn right now, the best thing they can do, they got four minutes left in the first half. The best thing they can do is pound Kenny Irons up in there and reestablish their identity. They've been trying to do, I think, a little bit too much in the passing game. They want to open it up, but today, this Arkansas defense is on them. They need to get physical, power the ball up in there, let Kenny Irons do his stuff. Irons, he'll fall for a couple of more to the 26. Boy, Kenny Irons. He's coming off 117 yards rushing last week against South Carolina. Pair of touchdowns as well. Well, look at the yards per rush on by McFadden up to over 10. Amazing. Against what what is arguably one of the top two or three defenses in the in the in, in all of college football. The lone back is Irons on third down and four. Cox up has room to run. He'll tuck at the 20. Hook slides at the 18. First down, Auburn. Now that was a great job by Brandon Cox. You know, we talked about the bad decision on fourth down of, of not dumping the ball and taking a chance for, for the completion on the first down. Right here, he senses pressure. Ernest Mitchell, number 90, was coming through. He knew he had the middle of the field, only needed to pick up five yards on third down. 
He felt he could do it himself. Good, smart decision by Brandon Cox. And it's a first down for Auburn at the 20-yard line. Pitch. Iron stumbles to the 19. Boy, nearly broke that tackle. And the clock runs with 2.35 remaining. And you know, Matero Richardson did not make that tackle, but he made the play. He came in off the corner like a, like a, 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 a shot. I mean, he was on fire coming through there, made Kenny Irons make a cut before he was ready. And again, you, now you see the uh, Arkansas red zone. Their defense in the red zone has been pretty solid. Not nearly as good as Auburn, but pretty solid on the season. Misdirection. That ball batted and nearly oh. intercepted. What a heads up play by Antoine Robinson off the right side. He went untouched as he pinched in. Got his big hand up and nearly got the interception. But an even more heads up play by the quarterback number 12. You got Antoine Robinson. Look at he tips the ball Third up in the air. Down. And Cox knows that Robinson's going to pick that ball off and does a super job of selling out and knocking that ball. You see right here, watch that left arm. Bah! Just slaps it out of there. Good play by Brandon Cox. Saves it. Saves the game changing play. Third down at 10, shotgun for Auburn. Low snap. Cox in the pocket, throws low. And it's incomplete at the 10 yard line. Tommy Trot, the tight end, could not make the catch. And Tommy Trot's upset, but we'll see. That ball was thrown low. I don't think it got to him before it hit the ground. We're going to get a good look at it here. John Vaughn into a 10 Well, gee, that, that was pretty close. The question is whether it's in the shadows, you can't really tell whether his hands were underneath the football. I don't know if, if, if you can confidently say one way or the other. John Vaughn will come in for a field goal attempt. Of 36 yards, he's 8 of 10 on the season, and he boots it up and good. So from 36, Auburn cuts Arkansas's lead to 7. And that ends the first half. The first Arkansas, half 17, Arkansas Auburn 10. We go back to New York, and here's Tim Brando. Welcome back. Arkansas leads number two ranked Auburn 17-10. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Berline, glad to have you alongside. Boy, what a wild first half. Big plays and flags. And how about the coolness of Mitch Mustaine, the young quarterback for Arkansas? Uh, I'll tell you what, I've been impressed. He's had the, the, the luxury of having a great running game to go along with it. But what can you say about this kid? He's learning on the move. He sees the blitz come and gets it out, gives his big six foot six receiver, Marcus Monk, a chance to make the play. But the key is that man right there, Darren McFadden. Big, strong, and obviously fast. No one's going to run him down. 63 yard touchdown. He's rushed for almost 100 yards in the first half himself. Auburn, if they want to get back in the ball game, get the ball to 23. Kenny Irons. He may be beat up a little bit, but he is your best resource. He relies on the adrenaline. I guarantee you he's going to come out the second half fired up. Feed him the football, and you'll get back in this ball game and maybe back in control of the ball game. He told us he never tires. He runs and lives off pure adrenaline 24 to 7. And you, you talk to him, and the adrenaline starts flowing. He starts getting excited. He wants to start running circles around the room, it seems like. Let's take a look now at our Dell halftime stats. You see the rushing yards, 149 for Arkansas, 64 for Auburn, and that must change. I think I'm with you on that point that Kenny Irons has to touch the football. And, and the Auburn defense, I mean, my goodness, 150 rushing yards against them in the first half, 10.0 yards of play against one of the top two or three defenses supposedly in the country. They have to wake up and start kicking Darren McFadden and Felix Jones and this offensive line for Arkansas in the mouth. Matt Clark, who rarely allows a return, boots it out of the end zone. What a weapon to have. I'll tell you, if you told a coach that you had a kid that could kick the ball into the end zone or out of the end zone and start the opponent at their 20-yard line, 50% of the time, he'd be excited about it. This guy does it 75, 80, 90% of the time. Tommy trying to get the crowd fired up. Everybody trying. They know this is a huge game, 
And if this crowd can wake up, it might wake up this Auburn team and take them to new heights. Yeah, we'll see if this crowd can't be the 12th man. They go right to McFadden, and the crowd responds after a one-yard pickup to the 21. And I guarantee you that Arkansas is going to go right to McFadden until they can't, until they have to put the ball up in the air. They don't want to put it on Mitch Mustang today to try and carry this team. They want him to be able to pick his spots when they need to make a play. It's going to be a nice, safe completion, a nice, safe attempt. They don't want him to feel the pressure of having to win this ball game. Mustang from the shotgun. Little draw, delay. McFadden wrestles his way to the 30-yard line. Looks to be just short of the first down. I'm really impressed with the, the creativity that this Arkansas team has in their running game. I mean, there, you're in a shotgun formation. It's a passing formation, obviously. But they run a nice little semi-sprint draw to pick up the first down or get close to pick up the first down. And McFadden leaves the field. Looks like he might be a little bumped up. Felix Jones. Number 25 replaces McFadden. Third and inches. Close. Where's the spot? And right on the 30-yard line. They're giving it to him. When you look at the, the offensive line right there, did not win the battle. The Arkansas defense. The Auburn defense did a great job right there of getting into that offensive line, establishing a new line of scrimmage in the backfield. And I'll tell you, Felix Jones is a great running back for Arkansas, but he is not the power back. They wanted McFadden in there in that play. Nice hole off the right side. And Jones picks up seven yards to the 37. I'm wondering if McFadden might have, he might have bumped their, his, his left shoulder or left arm. You see him right there talking to a trainer or somebody, and he's kind of hanging, that left arm was kind of hanging a little limp as he was leaving the field there. Nice to have a second back like oh. Felix Jones up. On second down and three, under center goes Mustang. On the stretch, boy, one thing Auburn will do, and that's hit you. And they knock Felix Jones down short of the first down. Now the two highlighted backs in this game, number one, number two ranked in the SEC in rushing, McFadden and Kenny Irons. 101 yards for McFadden, of course, ripped off a 63-yarder for a touchdown in the second quarter. Irons has really had to work hard to get the 48. He really has. It's, it's been a lot easier for McFadden than it has been for Irons. They'll line him up in the eye. Third down and one. Crowd on their feet. Look at a pass. Mustang out of the backfield to Hillis. Stacked up 45-yard line. First down, Arkansas. What a super call. I'll tell you. That's gutsy. Gutsy, gutsy. You're going to see Hillis coming out of the back. He's a fullback right here. All he's going to do is come straight out in the flat, and it's going to be a little semi-roll by Mitt Mustaine, and he's going to do a good job, nice and controlled, keeps his composure, delivers a strike to the very versatile Peyton Hillis. Great field position for Arkansas. Look at this formation. Oh! Coming out of the pile, Reggie Fish! Leans out to the six. What was that call <laughs> by Houston Nutt? That was almost the fumblerooski. You're going to see Reggie Fish. You're going to see him sitting down. In fact, you won't see him from this angle. He's right there sitting down, right, but almost in a field goal holder stance. The Auburn defense can't see him, but Karibi Didi, right there, number 21, you'll see him. He's the one that almost makes a tackle right there. And in college football, you are allowed to do this. Hey, that's what I used to do on the playground. Come on. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's first and goal, Arkansas, at the six-yard line of Auburn. Quickly under center goes Mustang. They'll pitch it out to McFadden at the five. Fuck 
Temple. That ball came out. Auburn says they've got it. Boy, he took a shot. There's been no indication of a touchdown. And they will mark McFadden down. He's saying he's down. At the one-yard line. What a pop that was. We're going to see just who it was right here. Good design of the play. And, oh, just right there. That he, he looks like he probably was down. That knee was down. On contact there. And that, that was a great hit by Aaron Savage. That was the hammer. Boy, you can hear it all the way up here. Inside the one yard line, the keeper. He, no. he dropped the ball. Mustang couldn't get in. Lost. He made dropped it. the ball. Auburn, do they have it? Mustang standing up without the football. He fumbled the snap. Two back-to-back -back wow. possessions that the ball has come out, but Arkansas retains possession. Watch Mustang. He goes down on the ground. He's not driving his legs like he's trying to get in the end zone. He's trying to get that football. And how often do you have two plays that could technically have been fumbles inside the one-yard line, and you recover both of them or you get away with both of them? The first one was obviously not a fumble. McFadden's knee was down, but that one right there, Houston Nutt. Mitch Mustang got to be feeling pretty darn good about their fortune right now. Timeout. One remains in what could be a very close ball game down the stretch. Five minutes of play in the third. Five minutes of play in the third quarter. Has a look of concern. Cody Bliss shanked that punt back at the 35 yard line that's where Arkansas started this drive of course a trickery by Reggie Fish and now it's third and goal at the one yard line well you don't have your horse McFadden there you got Felix Jones and Hillis they sent Jackson in motion the pitch comes outside and dancing in for six Arkansas Felix Jones and Arkansas decides to go with speed to the outside. That is Felix Jones's strength. That should have been a key for the Auburn defense. When they came out there with Felix Jones, should have been thinking, hey, this guy's edge speed. He's going to get to the edge. Will Herring had a chance, number 35, to get there and make the tackle. Didn't quite do it. Houston Nutt has a lot of reasons to celebrate as his team goes up 23, maybe going to be 24 to 10 right here. Jeremy Davis with the PAT splits the uprights and Jones rushes in for his first touchdown of the season and it opens up a 24-10 lead here in Auburn. Time now for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Well, you're going to see Reggie Fish right here sitting down in the scrimmage. He's the smallest six pounds and no one even knows where he is. Mitch Mustaine is going to sit there and just hand it off to him and boy, Amazing anybody knew where who had the football, but what a great design to that play and having him shuffle up to the line of scrimmage Smallest guy in the field without a doubt That set him up for the big touchdown to put him up 14 points And By the way that 14 the largest deficit for Auburn so far this season Yeah, and I don't look at Auburn as a come-from-behind team They're not built to score a lot of points in a hurry that works against them because now they're in a position where they almost have to start thinking about opening it up again in the passing game. They really don't want to do that. Kick is away. It's short. Lester breaks the tackle, stood up at the 26-yard line. All right, time now for our AFLAC question and answer. The question, who was the first SEC player to win both the Outland and Lombardi trophies in the same year? Let's take you back to 1998. Tracy Rocker of Auburn, 1988, was the year he won both the Outland and Lombardi. He's now the defensive line coach for the Razorbacks of Arkansas. And what a great career he had. You know, SEC Player of the Year in 88, two-time All-American, was just last year inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. Tremendous career for Tracy Rocker. And there he is on the sideline. He's still at his playing weight, it looks like. <laughs> he was a big boy then, he still is. But what a resource they have in him on the sideline. 
Can Auburn respond under pressure? The dump off from Cox, and it's caught by Carl Stewart. And let's go. What a ball game that is. Who would have thought? Three points out of the Clemson offense today. Cox is down at the 31. Ernest Mitchell just flew in untouched. And, and I, I am impressed with this Ernest Mitchell. He has been the guy. He stepped up for Marcus Harrison, number, number 55, who was their best defensive lineman. Ernest Mitchell, number 90 right there, stepped up last week and played at a level that even surprised his coaching staff. And they were hoping he could continue playing at that level. Today, he has been a force. We haven't talked about him a lot, but he has been causing problems on the inside for the Auburn offensive line all day. Irons gets a carry, squirts up the middle. First down to the 49. Boy, much needed first down by Kenny Irons. As we take a peek one more time at the SEC West, let's remind you, Auburn 3-0 in conference play, Arkansas 2-0, and the win two weeks ago against LSU, that was the gap because LSU, you, you would think, would be the one that would uh, be chasing Auburn. But instead, it's Arkansas now. They, they might be both chasing Arkansas after today unless Auburn finds a way to wake up. And I think that was a great play call, by the way, right there. Second 17. Arkansas was probably thinking draw or screen pass, something to get half of it back. And they just ran Kenny Irons right in their face, picked up 16, maybe 17 yards, and got the first down. Under two minutes to play, Tommy Trott, the motion man, the tight end. Now Cox throws it a flat, and he'll lose a couple. You know, he went through his progressions of reads, and there wasn't anything downfield, so he went to his safety valve. He did. Good discipline play. But let's talk about it. Here's Courtney Taylor. Watch how open he gets on this play. Going by Matterell Richardson. He does a little, little hesitation move, put him to sleep. That is wide open in big-time college football. He had a full step and a half. Two steps on him. The ball kind of fluttered a little bit. It caused Taylor to break up his stride. He misjudged it, and that's a blown opportunity that Auburn really couldn't afford right there. Second down at 12. Cox, as he does so often, audibleizing. Draw, iron, big hole left side. Swings out of a tackle and is spun down at the 31 yard line. Clock now the enemy of Auburn down by two touchdowns as we head down the stretch of quarter number three. We have a hurt player on the field. You're right, the clock is the enemy, but there's no time to panic for the Auburn Tigers. Tommy Tuberville just talking to his quarterback, Brandon Cox. Steve, seven ticks on the third quarter clock, fourth and nine. You're down by 14. Now, we mentioned clock being an enemy, but you know what? Auburn's been through tough games, as you mentioned. It, it's no time to panic, but they need to start pushing the momentum another way. Right. Uh, you know, they're, they're two score, two touchdowns behind, not even two scores. I think I agree with the call, fourth and nine. The odds are not in Auburn's favor of getting this, but I think you got to take a shot at it right here. Three wide receivers, two to the near side. Cox tries to sprint out. The pocket collapses, and down he goes. Oh, tip your hat to this young Arkansas team. They have been putting pressure on that front line all day. And not only do you give the ball back to Arkansas, you give them 10 more yards by taking the 10-yard loss. Three quarters in the book, 24-10. Arkansas, the Home Depot SEC on CBS continues after this message and a word from your local station. Arkansas 24 and the Auburn Tigers number two ranked 10. And that last time out, Pressure. Right here, Ernest Mitchell is going to blow right at the field. The guard right here, Duckworth, he sets the wrong way. And actually, it's the tackle coming down a little bit late, getting in his position. And Mitchell blows the play up, blows up field, and clears it out for Jamal Anderson, number 92, to come in and finish off the sack. But give credit to Ernest Mitchell, number 90, the backup, normal backup. I think he's showing that he deserves to be on the football field. Had a great game last week against Alabama. Playing super today for the Razorbacks. Fourth sack on Brandon Cox today by that Arkansas defense. They have the football and a 14-point lead at the 45. And a couple of yards goes Felix Jones. And we talked, Craig, about how the Auburn offense is not built to be a come-from-behind team. I'll tell you what, this Arkansas offense, 
is built to be a stay in the front, stay ahead of the pack team. They're built to run the football and wear you down with the lead. Well, Auburn needs to stop right now on this drive by Arkansas. The youngster Mustaine under center. Here comes the end around. It's Felix Jones with blazing speed. Finds a seam. First down. And they will mark him down at the 42 of Auburn. And he got a young quarterback under center right now that has a very bright future and a very tough SEC. McFadden takes it outside, stiffs arms his way for a first down. And when they go back and break this game down, it's chunks of yards that McFadden's been able to get against this Auburn defense, very much heralded. Very much heralded. Like the last four games, the Auburn defense has given up only 2.4 yards a carry today. Arkansas is averaging 7.4 yards a carry, more than their own average of 5.6 coming into this game. And another thing that's impressive, no teams this year have scored over 20 points against Auburn. Today, 10 minutes left in the game, Arkansas has 24. Well, they're running at will right now, and a flag stops the play. There's a flag on the play. Ten minutes and change to play. A 14-point lead for Arkansas. They have the football, and they are pushing Auburn's defense once again. McFadden lowers the pads, and no gain. Maybe a yard up to the 37-yard line. How about this, Steve? Arkansas's last 26 plays, 24 on the ground, two passes. As we said, Arkansas wants to do what they do best. That's run the football. They don't want the pressure on the young quarterback. Not that he has not played well. He's played Second very well, done what they've asked him to do today. Seven. But they know their best chance to win is if he's not trying to carry the load. And Darren McFadden, Felix Jones, and company have been carrying the load today. Now, make no mistake about it, they're still popping one another out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I expect this Auburn team to, to find a way to scratch and claw and make this interesting before it's all said and done. They've got too much at stake. I mean, at some point, these guys are too good. At some point, somebody's going to make a play and get Auburn back in this ballgame. Third down and one. Mustaine under center. Hands off. First down and more. Look at the pile move. One, two, three. Auburn Tigers hanging on the back. And Steve, you have to wonder the impact of this game. You look at the AP top 10. Auburn sitting at number two behind Ohio State. What impact would you see if Auburn falls here today? Wow, I mean, you're, you're seeing tremendous impact because Auburn can technically fall all the way back down behind all these undefeated teams and in, in, in out of the national championship picture for sure. I mean, it's hard, going to be hard to climb and jump over all these undefeated teams. They'll fall behind. And off Jones turns the corner. Shot down to the 22, short of the first down. But again, it's the six and seven yards a hit that has been the difference maker today. Auburn's rush game against Arkansas's rush game. And there is nothing that is more demoralizing to a defense and a team and a stadium when you're the away team and you're running at will against what is supposed to be a pretty darn good defense. It just takes the wind out of the sails. And Arkansas knows that. That's what they built their team for. Auburn is not used to being in this position. The second down at two. McFadden, big hole, first down. The drive continues at the 19-yard line. And most importantly for Arkansas fans, the clock runs. The clock runs now. It is safe to say. It is almost panic time if you're on the Auburn side of things here. Now, something drastic has to happen. You are, you are at the point where desperate measures need to be taken. And you cannot let Arkansas score three scores now. I don't think Auburn's going to have a chance to get three possessions. 
Well, Mitch Mustaine about ready to put his name in the record books. No freshman quarterback, true freshman, has ever won his first four games as a starter. And he's seven minutes and 21 seconds away from doing just that. Fresh downs. Oh, look at the effort. Boy, the legs keep pumping by Felix Jones. Steve, got to ask you. When we had all of our talks with Auburn's players and the defensive coach, also with Tommy Tuberville, there was kind of a, a thread that went throughout each conversation. And that, that talk was, we're still beat up from the LSU game. No doubt about it. I mean, we're that, still that was, not physically back. They they got that was the most physical game Tommy Tuberville remembers ever being involved with, and his team still physically is not back, and it's shown up today. Multiple flags line. stops the clock with 6:37 to play. Offsides on the nose guard. Penalty will be five yards. Now remain second. Go Hawks, go! Go Hawks, go! Go Hawks, go! First and goal from the six-yard line of Auburn. McFadden lines up deep at the tail. And again, he pushes his way to the five-yard line. A pickup of two. Cinderic Marks. Made the tackle. McFadden today. 136 yards on 24 carries. You can't say enough about this guy. I mean, Arkansas knew coming in this ball game they had to ride this horse. And Auburn knew that he was going to be the focus. They wanted to put the game on Mitch Mustaine. They have not been able to do that. It has been a ground attack all afternoon by the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Again on the ground, McFadden. Good pursuit by Auburn, but the clock continues to tick as we hit the 530 mark of quarter number four. See, if you do the math, Craig, you know, that the, 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 say they settle for the chip shot field goal here, Two touchdowns and two 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 point conversions still don't get back that 17 points you need. So Auburn really has to do something spectacular here and keep Arkansas from getting anything out of this drive. Third down and goal. Pitch out misdirection. Oh what a collision. He stays in bounds. Felix Jones took one, two, three hits, and the clock under five minutes. Now, put yourself in the kicker's shoes for Arkansas. Jeremy Davis, how many career field goals does he have? Two. Two. He missed an extra point against Alabama last week. This is nothing more than an extra point, really. So this is not a gimme by any stretch of the imagination. And we go back to the opening drive. A 34-yard field goal by that young man. Here they'll place the ball down at the 13. This will be from 22. Officially. Long snap count. They're coming at him. And the boot is good. Drills it. Cool and calm, Jeremy Davis. Twenty-seven to ten, Arkansas. That last drive, eleven plays, all on the ground. Fifty-two yards, nearly seven minutes chewed off the fourth quarter clock against a defense that knew you were going to run the ball every play. A squibber, they let it roll on through. Picked up with a 15 by Davis and is put down back around the 16-yard line. There are a few celebrating here in, in Auburn still. Yes, they are. Not many. And they're still in the stands. Many of the Auburn faithful have departed for the gates. 
Out of bounds goes the tight end Tommy Trot. Arkansas's remaining schedule, Southeast Missouri State, then comes Ole Miss, Louisiana Monroe. They travel down to Spurrier country at South Carolina, Tennessee, Mississippi State. And guess what, my friend? Right after Thanksgiving, LSU. And that is the one. It's going to be right here on CBS. That is the one for all the marbles. If you lay it out that way, I mean, Tennessee is going to be a tough hurdle for Arkansas. But if they can get there, what a great opportunity for them. Cox dances, throws, incomplete. Nice coverage over the back, slapping it away. And that was Love, number 20. You know, it's been a long time since Arkansas has been in this position. And Houston Nutt, he's, he's waited a long time, been there for nine years at Arkansas. And to have this position and do it this way, coming to Auburn, with a freshman quarterback and really dominating this game from start to finish, it shows him that he does indeed have a very good football team. Third down and nine. Cox sets up and throws, sides armed it to the sideline, and the clock will continue to run at the 27. Going to be short of the first down. Let's eye the eyeball it. They're giving it to him. They got the first down. And I'll tell you, Arkansas will give them that pass all day long because they know the clock's going to keep running. They're picking up eight or ten yards a pop. They have only three and a half minutes left in this ball game. They will let them have all of that underneath stuff, nothing up the field. Two timeouts remain and a near interception at the 35-yard line. That was Darius Vinette, who was shaken up earlier and nearly saw the end zone. Yeah, that, that, he should have seen the end zone right there. That ball was very poorly thrown by Brandon Cox. How about 37 yards of total offense for Auburn in this half? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, Arkansas, we talk about how well their offense is done, but give this defense credit, too. Auburn has never gotten it going offensively, never had any rhythm, and you got to give credit to the physical nature of Arkansas on defense as well. Yeah, very little emotion shown by Auburn today. Three-step drop, Cox again throws as the intended receiver took a took a seat and got back up. It was Brad Lester. How physical was it today? Well, look at the shots Brandon Cox has taken. He's taken quite a few. These, these Arkansas Razorback defenders just keep coming, keep coming, high energy, very physical, and they've made a very good Auburn offensive line look very average today. Well, and also, you also see Cox not very mobile. He had right. the high ankle sprain, the sprained knee against LSU, and it has really kept him in the pocket, unable to roll out much. And he's not the kind of quarterback that's going to beat you with his legs anyway. They need the running game and the play action to give him the time back there and make plays. He'll set up and throw. Fifth sack of the afternoon by Arkansas's defense. Now, some of these sacks, let's, let's, get, let's not make sure, make sure it's understood it's not only the offensive line, the coverage up the field, man-to-man -man coverage by Arkansas, which is what they do for the most part, has been very, very good. There have been times where Brandon Cox, that play right there for an example, was sitting there. He had plenty of time to get back and make a decision and make a throw, but there was nobody open. Arkansas is not going to put a return man back as Cody Bliss Gives it a foot at the 15. Hits at the 30. And rolls to a stop at the 20-yard line. 58-yard kick with 2.21 left. Last time Arkansas won here at Auburn, 2002. And they ran away with a 38-17 win. Final seconds of the fourth quarter. And they're still running and running hard to the 32. So we talked about by the end of the day, the unbeatens, one of them would be out. It's going to be Auburn. They're going to drop to three and one in conference play. Arkansas stays unbeaten in the SEC West at three and oh, they'll improve to four and one. And there's a shift of power in the SEC West. Arkansas in control of their own destiny. What more could Houston Nutt and the Arkansas Razorbacks? Go ahead, boys, celebrate a little bit. You did something not many people do. Come into Auburn, Alabama, and leave with a smile on your face. 
Houston Nutt and the Razorbacks of Arkansas on the road. They beat number two Auburn 27 to 10. No doubt about this one from start to finish. For Steve Berline, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long from Auburn with a final score. Arkansas 27 and Auburn 10.